How do I get to the place where I let authenticity run my life? I think through my mistakes in the past, you know, through the moments in my, my youth where I try to manipulate my music sometime, where I thought I had it figured out, you know, got a few hits under my belt, and I thought, oh, this is easy. I can do this no time. And then it resulted in some of the worst music I think I had, I had ever produced at the time. Uh, I learned a lot from that. Also, I think, you know, being really in tune with um, your spiritual side really helps. And also having um, a, a real true core and a supporting cast, you know? This is my first independent project, but I'm dependent on more people now than ever, actually. And it is, I think, the love uh, that I have for them and myself in nature that allows me to really just live freely um, and enjoy enjoy being myself, you know? Also, I think, um, you know, in my readings of a few people, of, of Gandhi in particular, um, I learned that everything is interdependent and no one is actually um, anything without someone else. I think the love I have also for my son now, it kind of forces me to be more authentic than I ever have because I know that I am uh, walking in steps that he will surely follow in and I want him to be his truest self. I know I did a piece with Vibe in particular that was just about me cutting my hair and it was my first Buddhist act. I didn't even realize it uh, now that I follow Buddha but now I see that that was my first true act towards Buddhism which was letting go. Um, that's what it's all about. That's why a lot of the monks shave their hair off because they believe that it's an attachment in a lot of ways to things that are irrelevant to happiness and fulfillment and spirituality. So maybe that was a, a form of it, but it was also a way for me to, to do something for someone else. I cut it and I gave it to Locks of Love, a um, program that donates hair for kids with cancer. And I felt really good about it. I didn't know how good I would feel about doing something for someone else like that. Um, and it was something that I thought defined me so much that I wanted to prove to myself that it wasn't just the hair, that it was, <laughs> that it was the talent also. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm held down by my hair anymore. I feel the, actually like um, you know, it is just is who I am, and it's, uh, I actually feel kind of naked without it. Well, one of the things that you can key in on with this new music is the celebration of it all, the celebration of the human experience, of a true, real-life, real-time human experience, you know, and all of the beautiful things that go into the blessed lives that we are able to live every day. Um, the good, the bad, the ups, the downs, the tears, the joy, the depression, the anxiety, the insecurity, the confidence, you know, all of those yin and yangs, I think, that pretty much make up each day. And most importantly is how beautiful real things are, you know? Not always fantasy, fantasizing, but really seeing the beauty in reality. And I think that that can be um, quite rare in music sometimes, especially in um, young black music. Maybe it's because I've been in it for a while. I'm still a young man, but now for some reason, I embrace the blues, I embrace the pain, I embrace all of those things um, because I realize that they actually make the other side just as beautiful, you know, the happiness, the joy. Um, so a real, real celebration 
of the human experience.